I'd just like to apologise in advance to any Rangers fans watching this for the way I pronounce James Tavernier. I don't know why I did it. I never usually pronounce it like this. But as soon as you notice it in the video, it will get on your nerves. Apologies in advance. Please enjoy the video. Hello viewers, a very warm welcome to you all joining me in episode 3 of our Glasgow Rangers PES 2019 Master League series. The feedback I got from episodes 1 and 2 yesterday was absolutely brilliant, so I really do appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who viewed, liked and commented as well, I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the episode today, I do just want to say... If you haven't yet picked up PES 2019 and you are planning to do so and get it on PC, which I would highly advise, then you should head over to cdkeys.com. They have got PES 2019 on offer for £24.99. On top of that, you can get the Beckham edition for 27% off and even the Legend edition at £49, reduced by 25%. I managed to get my copy from CD Keys, which is what I'm using in these videos, and I can say it is safely reliable. Be sure to go and check out the affiliate links in the description. They give me a little kickback, and it helps the channel out a lot. Thanks very much. But getting back into the episode today, and what I've decided to do is, we mentioned last episode that what we're going to do is skip games in between so that we can get through season more, and we'll come back to the more important games that you know we want to focus on uh, and in the meantime uh, I would play games off camera well I did do that but what I'm going to do from now on is show you the goals that happen in those games just so you guys are staying in the loop and not missing out too much so onwards to the episode then and first of all I want to start off with this you'll remember that at the end of episode 2 we had agreed deal with both West Brom and personal terms with Kyle Bartley. Uh, the deal was finalised. Unfortunately, it was after the St. Johnston game. We didn't quite get him in time for that, but I was pleased to get him through the door nevertheless because we did need a centre-back. At the same time, we'd also agreed a deal to sell Graham Dorans. We got a good prize for him, about four and a half million, if I remember correctly. So I felt like I couldn't turn that down. He hadn't even played a game for us yet. So we thought this was a good deal for the club. Moving on to the St. Johnston game, and this was how it went. Late on in the first half, our pressure finally paid off as Scott Arfield pounced onto this good delivery from James Tavernier. They gave this as an own goal, but I personally think it was definitely Arfield's. We couldn't retain our lead, however, as in the 86th minute, St. Johnston had a reply, my centre-backs just kept backing off. And this happens. So that left me a little bit frustrated going into deadline day. The likes of Lafty and Morelos were tired. They've been playing two games a week. I had to bring on Umar Sadiq who didn't really do a lot. Uh, so I needed a forward. And this was who I found. Some of you might recognise him. Eddie Nketiah. Uh, he actually plays for Arsenal in real life. For some reason on this, he's a free agent. And I can't quite work out why. But nevertheless, I thought, yeah, great, 19 years old, 82% chance of signing. In fact, even higher now, uh, £144,000 salary. I thought, yeah, great, you know, let's go for him. Two hours later, I get this message. So that was a little bit annoying. Uh, it left me having to do what other people might call a little bit of a panic. I couldn't go back in for him, which was also quite annoying. And as a result, I was left to try and scout there and then. So from then on, I looked on the transfer list and the loan list and managed to find some gems. As you can see here, the likes of Jan Caramo, Philippe Viziu, Boya Mayoral, the likes of Bonazzoli as well was somewhere along. And I thought, yeah, these guys... If I can loan them in for a season, may just do the trick. I wasn't going to transfer them, as you can see here originally, because they were just far too much money. I tried loaning them in, but they just wanted far too much money. And I wasn't prepared to pay it for a loan deal. For six months a year, they wanted, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand. In some cases, a million, as you see here. 
I just didn't want to pay that much for someone who wasn't going to be here in six months' time. When all hope seemed lost, I got a message from my scout telling me he'd found a special player. Oh. On a side note, I know he's in a Man U kit there, and obviously he plays for Newcastle. This was a problem with an option file, but I have now sorted it. So, we hopefully shouldn't have any more of those problems. In terms of outgoings, we got a low transfer offer for Bradley, which I ended up accepting because he just wasn't going to get any game time. And also, we got a hefty transfer offer for Scott Arfield, which I actually rejected. And I know some of you guys may actually be screaming at the video right now saying, Oh my word, what are you doing, you stupid man? But he's actually been playing quite well. And he's my highest rated player. So I saw no need to sell. You know, we're not in any panic to sell. We've got a decent transfer budget and salary. So I think I should keep him. Here you'll see that I actually realised halfway through that when I added players to listed... In the previous video, that actually wasn't transfer listed. I got it completely wrong. I am new to Pez. I am still learning. So, as you can see here, I had to go back and put them all on the transfer list and remove them from my listed players. But never mind, we move on. That took us into the Motherwell game. And some of you may remember, in episode 2, I did say that we were going to have this and the Krasnodar game as part of a double header in episode 3. But... I decided with all of the transfer sagas put in and the highlights from the St. Johnston game that it would have been too much to cram into one video along with two games. I don't want these videos to end up being 30 or 40 minutes long. So as a result, I decided to play it off screen. And it's a good job that I did because I have no goals to show you. And why? Because there weren't any. So that was fun. Uh, and with that in mind, that leaves the league table looking something like this. After four games, we are actually fifth. We're unbeaten, to be fair. But with those two draws, it does drop us a little bit behind both Aberdeen and Celtic on 10 points. Kilmarnock and Motherwell also on 9 and 8 above us. So perhaps a Motherwell draw wasn't so bad. But, you know, at the end of the day, we do want to be beating these sort of teams and looking to finish in the top two. So, hopefully an improvement in future games to come. But nevertheless, I am adapting to the gameplay still. And it will take a little bit of time. And that now brings us to today's game. The first game of the Europa League group stage season against Krasnodar. And thankfully the board have been realistic about our chances this season. Goal is to reach the final. So, that should be an entertaining challenge. Uh, but for now, as the owner says, they're on the right-hand side. Let's just concentrate on getting through the group stage. And I completely agree with that because Krasnodar are going to be a very, very tough team. I think they are actually higher rated uh, than us. So it's going to be a tough game. In terms of team management, this is what I'm going with. Pretty standard, really. Kyle Bartley, obviously, the only change from when you guys saw the last game. He did play against Motherwell, so it's an unchanged team from that game. The stamina, the team looks fresh. Almost as I mentioned previously, Kyle Lafferty and Morelos, both, they cover so much ground pressing from the front, uh, and their stamina does take a little bit of hit. As you can see, Lafferty's is uh, lower than everyone else's, so we do have to keep an eye on that. I am going to need a striker, so I'm going to have to look He's a free agency. If we have a look at the opposition team, they are better than us in terms of rating-wise. Lots of high 70s in there, uh, whereas we are predominantly low 70s. So it's going to be a challenge, but nevertheless, I'm looking forward to it. So with that in mind, it is time to get the UEFA Europa League group stage underway. So welcome to everyone. We are here again and ready to go. Relatively freshly started in many of Europe's major leagues. It is a time filled with hope and expectation, and that is certainly the case here. The first step, one of many, towards the very summit of European football. This is the time when you dream, indeed perhaps you believe, you are allowed to believe. It is 
so a venue this which simply adds to the spectacle of the game it stages one of the most impressive arenas in this part of the world We played in our home kit for the majority of these games, so decided for a little change. Let's go for the orange kit this time. Let's hope it brings us some luck. Ball's gone wrong, but you'll go to Lafferty. It's unlucky. Oh, can Tavernia... Oh, he should have got to that Tavernia. He's been overlapped by the attacker. But he's done well there. And he'll look for Lafferty in the box. Come back in. Lafferty on the volley. Oh. And that makes it half time. We don't get the opportunity to take the corner. And uh, there's been a lot of breaking down in the final third. As you can see, a possession. We've, we have dominated. But we can't quite get that little bit of magic in the final third. I'm contemplating whether to go 4-3-3. Uh, let's have a look here. Change formation. Let's see what we've got. Hmm. I mean, I don't like the fact that with 4 3 3, you lose, you know, we lose on the strikers. I would like to keep that partnership, but I don't know perhaps a 4 4 2 would be would be a better option. And we, uh, we have a look here. So we'll go with that. We'll put Barisic back onto uh, back up to left back, Tavernia up to right back. Um, I'm going to take Goldson off for Katic, uh, for, um, instead for, for our midfielder. Uh, Koulibaly will go into the centre. We'll keep our field on the right for now because he's been playing well. Uh, and then we'll bring Kandeas on onto the wing. This is really when I, I, was, I was looking for someone like Ryan Kent on the substitute bench. That is my fault. I should have perhaps had him on there. But we'll go for this. We'll go with this for now and see if... Uh, it will be any better in the second half. Oh, nice one-two there with Candeus and Lafferty. And now we look for Morelos in the box. Ball comes out to Lafferty. Oh, he's got to get the shot away. You might be able to hear me. Oh, my word. He's sent the ball through and somehow he's through on goal. Wow. So, I mean, the player, I think it's Ari, he turns in the middle of his run and somehow still manages to get the goal. I can't believe that, to be honest. Acres of space down the middle. One through ball has penetrated us. About 70 yards it was on the ground. And we'll have to have a... I've got to have a look at the replay here because... I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't even show that far, that far forward if we just have a quick look here. I mean, I'm not even sure what happens here. It's just, just literally just one through ball. Midfield is completely vacated. The centre halves have split, and uh, and as a result, he gets in on it. I can't quite believe it. We're a bit shell shocked, and now we are chasing the game. I mean, the team is all over the place here. We we can't even string together three passes. We're going to have to make another change. Ryan Jack will come off. Ajaria will come on. And I have to say, Tavernier has been really, really poor. I'm going to have to take him off of Flanagan. Uh, he's all over the place today. And uh, that is all our subs. We've got to go with it now. We've gone more attacking in the hope that it might work. Barisic has some space now. Looks for the ball across. Who was that? It was actually John Flanagan who managed to burst into the box. He's got to do better there. It's a really good ball from Barisic. Oh, he's got to hit the target there. It's a shame it fell to someone like John Flanagan.
Koulibaly has a little bit of space now. And there's loads on the right-hand side. Looks for Lafferty, who's open. It's a goal, and we're back in it. Scott Arfield, finally. We get a good ball from that right-hand side, which has been really uh, below par today. Lafferty bursts into the box. He's eight. He's, I mean, he's free for just the, the entire attack. Scott Arfield on the right-hand side, and Lafferty is there once again. And that is what he does best, Kyle Lafferty. He gets into the box and he makes those big aerial plays. And it is 1-1. Morelos. Oh, it's lovely. And now he has pace to run in from behind. Oh, he's found the ball. Candeus. Oh! <laughs> what a goal that would have been. Morelos. I was going to cross it in here, but decided to fake shot instead. He sees Candeus out on the right, and it's really unlucky. Did the goalkeeper get a save to that? I think he did. He did indeed. We need to just get rid of it now. I've got to stop trying to play it out from the back because it's not working. And that is why we tried to get rid of it there. The player doesn't get to it in time. And it's 2-1 yet again. Well, I should say they're in the lead yet again. It's really disappointing, you know. Look at that. Ajaria is slumped. Have a look here. We kept trying to play it out. I mean, look here. This time we try and get rid of it, but they do pounce upon it. And again, centre-halves just fall asleep. And once again, we've got it all to do. Bartley gets it away. Oh, it's a poor clearance. But that is full time, guys. And we uh, we have to be disappointed with that, really. I mean, to be fair, these are a better side, as we pointed out at the start. But, you know, we played... We we had a lot more possession. We had a lot more chances. So, we should, you know, we are going to feel disappointed with that. I mean, if you have a look there, we really, really got to do better. Uh, but... You know, at the end of the day, that, that is what the game's about, isn't it? You've got to take your chances. You've got to show that quality. We haven't done that today, but never mind. We move on to the next one. Still a long way to go. Five games in the group stage. Uh, you know, and we still have an opportunity to qualify through that. Next up in the league is Kilmarnock. I won't be showing that game in the next episode, guys. If we just have a look at the schedule now and see what we've got. We have got Hearts coming up, then a gaping hole there for the international break, and then Bayer Leverkusen. So that is going to be the one that we do, a double header. This time we can fit those in with no transfer window upon us. So it is going to be Hearts and Bayer Leverkusen in the next episode. Uh, in the meantime, I will play against Kilmarnock, Dundee, and Luzerne as well in the hope that we can get back to winning ways because it is now three games uh, without a win. So, yeah, looking forward to that, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video. It would round it off there. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content. Lots more coming your way as well, so be sure to look out for that. On that note, guys, I'm Bromway18. Thank you very much for watching this video if you made it through to the end, and I will see you next time.